everyone, how's it hanging? How's it happening? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Moshcast. Today we are having we have a brand new conversation with you guys today. But uh, before we get to introducing our special guest, let's introduce everyone else that is here. First and foremost, uh, they are my co-host for the Cinematic Analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, my best friend, Maddie. Hey, what the fuck is up, Kyle? I'm excited for this. I originally texted fucking Julian in the arms. Oh, he's alive! Yay! No, but I, uh, I, I literally texted Julian. I was like, we gotta fucking get an interview with Kevin. We gotta fucking do it. We have and to. here we are, bitches. Here we fucking are. I'm excited, Kevin. I got a question for you. Oh, just wait. Just and honestly, wait. screw you and your pickles. <laughs> wow! Okay, right when we get started. But next up, he is doing his first ever conversation, first ever interview. Let's bring in Wyatt. Gonna try it this time. <laughs> but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode here on the loudest podcast and all the music. Thankfully, I didn't botch the interview series of the Moshcast, and uh, this should be a very fun episode. And we get to ask questions uh, for our good friend Kevin here. So, um, um, this is my first time doing a Moshcast interview, so this should be a fun episode. So, Julian, you may pass to the next person. Next up, he is our resident sleepy boy. <laughs> We know, resident lazy boy, I should say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, AJ. And uh, he is the only person that can dance to a Beartooth song. Give it up for AJ. <laughs> yeah. All right. I literally uh, exist. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the loudest podcast of all fucking music. The most fucking cast. And today we're reviewing our good friend here, Kevin. Reviewing? I haven't seen this man. <laughs> what? Reviewing? Oh, wait. It's a performance review for my past three years. Oh, my bad. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're interviewing Chad. I'm so sorry. Anyway. Uh, what? Wait, glad to see this man. What? <laughs> okay. Moving on. Next up he is the, he is the assassin. He is our number one WWE fan. Honestly, I think out of everyone, he's the biggest WWE fan here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Josh Dinker is here. <laughs> what up, motherfuckers? What up, ladies and gentlemen? It is I, the assassin, Josh Dinker here. Welcome wow. back to our conversation with Ke our good friend, Kevin. Can't wait to get this started. Uh, yes, indeed. And, uh, oh, yeah, Jason's here. Yeah, uh, not hi. surprised. I, I just exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, hi, I like video games. Um, like, music and, uh, and wrestling, so hi. Like, uh, shit. Yeah, hi. And, like yeah, this, and this is hosted by Jim Ross. I'm not... Motherfucker, I'm going to <laughs> stop insulting you. Just to spite you, Julian is now going to legally change his name to that. <laughs> <laughs> that seems uh, like something you would do, Julian. Act. I would do that just to fuck you guys. <laughs> See? See, I do know you. I think we have one more person here. Who? Oh. Really? You're going to say it because I just changed my... Oh, fuck you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is now time to introduce the man of the hour. The <laughs> one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, the man that's helped us out many, many times with this fucking podcast. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I need to call my oh. therapist. Okay, well, well, from the Chord Progression Podcast, formerly known as the best song of the day, formerly known as Fox 2000 of the day, formerly known as whatever the fuck you called before that, the one and only, Kevin! Grazie. Grazie. Well, I mean, thanks for the intro, man, and as everyone that's listening, yes, my name is Kevin, Kevin Elstead, uh, I run the Chord Progression Podcast, and... I've been talking with, you know, probably these guys on the live stream for, God, I don't know how long we've been on the live, dude, live stream. At, at least three years. Me and Julian for point. three years. At yeah. least three years at this point for, I know, I, Julian I and Maddie. And hang out. Yeah, you joined last year, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to have you, my friend. Happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. happy. 
Happy, happy, happy. My God! If you're happy... <laughs> we're, okay. we're happy, happy, like we're hyper hyped. And yeah. you're happy and loving. Uh, okay. No! <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a rule. Right. We have and a rule Kevin. now. And with Kevin, we can break that rule for this episode. But, yeah, uh, okay. Oh, my sanity is going out the window. We're, we're going we're gonna to break rules this episode. I'll yeah, say, yeah. usually when it comes to, like, the stuff that we do anyway, I mean, we set up rules, and all of a sudden, like, they get broken pretty easily. Like, anytime we do a live stream, it's like, oh, it's a 10 o'clock, like, 10 o'clock, like, I'm stopping this stuff. Like, last night, we were doing it. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna stop at 10 o'clock. We didn't get them to, like, 1040. Yeah, like, 11 o'clock, but... Shit yeah. happens. Yeah, we had an interesting conversation and some disagreements, but that was oh. yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Let's focus on today. Is this what I yeah. think it is about? No, it is not what you think it is about. Okay, is so about. I can still bring it up. Thank you. Oh, you can still bring it up, but it was about some asshole in the music industry. But you can bring up whatever the hell you want. You know me. I mean, we'll talk about whatever the hell you guys want. Yeah, fuck MGK. Okay, so let's go ahead I and get knew it. let's go ahead and get things started with this. So basically, Kevin, in case you don't know how our interview series works, basically each of us go around asking fun questions, serious questions, whatever kind of questions we got. Then after that, we move on to a little thing we like to call the turnover, which I doubt you know what that is, but we will tell you what it is when we get to it. Then we will get to two very special games, which is Guess the Artist and Would You Rather. So let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, you know what, Maddie? Let's start it off with you. Going ahead. All right. Do we want to do a serious one or do we just want to? What do you think, Julian? Should I just go for it? Go for it. Kevin, Let's what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Did you not like Eternal Blue? Please, I genuinely would like to know. Why did I not like Eternal Blue by Spirit Box? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So, I think the best way to put it is, it's not that I didn't like it. It's I kind of saw it a very similar to something with like, uh, like Code Orange, like with their most recent album that came out in 2020, where. Like, it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was good. But the problem that I had with it was it was just so, like, it was so overhyped to the point when I listened to it. It was, like, some of the singles that you listen to, like, Holy Roller, Circle With Me. Yeah, I was big into those songs. But listening to some of the other ones, it, they just kind of lacked a lot of this, what made those singles special as well. And there was maybe one other song in there that I actually latched onto, and it was the one that featured Sam Carter from Architects. Like, that, the vocal disparity between himself and Courtney LaPlante was absolutely incredible. But it was just there was something there that I just wasn't able to latch onto like I was to some other albums that came yeah. out in 2021. Like, I mean, you guys know I latch on the Rise Against one like crazy mm -hmm. because of my oh. fandom for Rise Against. Uh, oh, yeah. Ice Nine Kills is Welcome to Horrorwood, Silver Scream Part 2. I mean, that was one that I was just like, yeah! But it was one of the best albums of the freaking year. Like, it was it was absolutely nuts. Or, uh, and, I mean, another album that kind of like caught my attention in that same kind of way. And I know you guys will probably agree with me on this, especially because you brought them on the podcast at one point with Caskets and their album Lost Souls. Yes. I mean, that it's it, it, it's what came out, in my opinion, was when it came to Eternal Blue, there was a good amount of substance there. But I didn't fully love it like some other people did because for two reasons. One, I didn't fully get into the hype. And then after the hype kind of came in. I didn't fully get into the deep cuts as much as other people did, and I didn't connect with them, and I didn't really feel them as special as some of the singles outside of the one that featured Sam Carter from Architects. Okay, I ge my, like my question was genuine because I remember you saying you you didn't like it, and at the time I hadn't heard it, and then we listened to it on the Moshcast, and I like absolutely fucking fell in love with it. Like <clears throat> my ranking is now um, five is Welcome to Horrorwood, four is uh, Lost Souls. Three is Eternal Blue, two is Manic, and obviously number one has not fucking changed since June 25th of 2021. And it will never change. Thank you very much. Oh, I don't blame question. you for not changing. I knew you were going to put Beartooth at number one. And it just, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, even after, like, going through more stuff, I mean, my ranking still for albums of the year stay the same. Number five was Stepson. Number four was Beartooth. Three was Caskets. Two was Ice Nine Kills. And one, even though I think my fandom kind of, you know, leaked in there, but I still think it was the best album of the year was Rise Against. Mm-hmm. You're not going to like my favorite albums of all time, then, if that's the case. Or my video coming out on Saturday. <laughs> mm. favorite, albums all, favorite albums of all time? I mean, dude, it's your opinion. It's, you know, it might not agree with it, but, you know, that's just kind of what happens. Yeah, spoiler alert, Spirit Box is number one on both lists. But that's neither here nor there. But, uh, 
But uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and move on to Wyatt's. What is your first question? Is mayonnaise an instrument? Oh my God. Yes, mayonnaise <laughs> is an instrument. If you ever tried using mayonnaise as an instrument, you can use it. Mayonnaise. Anyways, you can smack it. You can like stick a stick in there and like kind of act like, you know, you're doing something to the mayonnaise. You, you know, people usually do it themselves on a Saturday night. Oh my God. <laughs> and what? you get some certain <laughs> things to sound and you can make it its own instrument. So what? yes, mayonnaise. Whoa. Whoa. Along with horseradish. Horseradish is also an instrument. Don't let Squidward tell you otherwise. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Can I just say my favorite band is Bring Me the oh Horseradish? <laughs> Bring Me the Horseradish. <laughs> or <laughs> Bring Me the Horizon. But in all Bring Me the Horizon. Um, what inspired you to like music? Ooh. So just like music in general, I like the music that I got into really liking. Yeah, like what inspired you to like all this rock and music? music and metal music. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. I mean, pretty much anytime when you get a question like this, a lot of it kind of just revolves down to like how you got into music in the first place. What was your first real introduction to it? And for mm -hmm. me, it was like whatever the stuff my dad was listening to, because even when I was like, you know, a year or two years old, me, my dad, and my brother would go down into the basement. He had this like, you know, 1980s stereo with the tower speakers and everything. And we would like, he put on a couple of CDs, a couple of songs, and we would literally be down there, air guitar the shit out of these songs and i'm like one or two years old at this point and it was always van halen zz top poison and maybe some journey if we had if we had longer time because my dad also liked journey so getting into that like that was my first real exposure to music and i always end up liking it however as time went on as all of a sudden you know got towards you know like I was in fourth grade and I switched schools and i just wanted to get along with people and i really didn't you know know anybody plus i was also like well, the place that I went to for school is full of a bunch of rich kids, and I was definitely not that, so everyone kind of looked down on me. And I just wanted a way to fit in, so I'd listen to whatever the hell they were listening to at the time. So it was like 2004, 2005, so it's like, you know, like whatever was popular on the freaking radio, I don't even remember. I remember it was Akon was popular at that point. <laughs> so all of a sudden, it was like, you know, what got me into some of the other music was like playing video games, honestly. Uh, couple of different video games that really got me in there. One is one of the SmackDown vs. Raw games. I can't remember if it was oh. 2006 or 2007, but they had, Ooh. like, four songs off of 1X from Three Days Grace on that, like, soundtrack. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Yeah, because it was yeah. like they had Ride on there, and I Become. I think they had Pain on there, and they might have had one more. I think it might have been Time of Dying, honestly. And it was just like, and then also like NASCAR Thunder 2004. Yeah, every time you turn on the game, because I am I I grew up watching NASCAR. I'm a big NASCAR fan, not as big as I used to be, but you know, I still enjoy. Every time you turn on NASCAR Thunder 2004, I Hate Everything About You was the first song that came on every single time. So like all of a sudden, starting to get into some Three Days Grace stuff, you know, American Idiot comes out my, when I was in fourth grade. Now all of a sudden there's something there like that I'm starting to kind of get a little bit more into. But it wasn't really until Guitar Hero kind of came out and... I was able to really latch onto something and fa and finally really find a band for me to latch onto that I could consider like a band that I would listen to kind of have like a piece of like myself in there. And that was disturbed. Like I let's see, like playing trying to play stricken. I could not play stricken and guitar for my entire life, but I love David Draymond's voice and I love the way it was composed. And one of the things that kind of pushed me even further in down in the music was like I started getting disturbed and I went to a Catholic school. Oh. They did not like the fact that I liked disturbed. <laughs> So they were, like, very, very, very concerned, like, who the person I was becoming, my character, and everything. And, <laughs> like, they were trying to force me not to listen to Sturb as much as possible. Like, they had a thing where it's, like, you can bring in a CD, because it's 2008, bring in a CD of your favorite artist. Everyone's bringing, like, Taylor Swift, Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, that kind of stuff. And I bring it in, Destructible Eye to Sturb. And I was, the only song I was going to skip was Deceiver, because David Draymond says fuck in there, like, five times. And I'm like, yeah, no, 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 not in eighth grade, you know, like Catholic school, like, room. no, no, we're not doing that. So we played in a struggle, played inside the fire, and then all of a sudden the CD cut out. I'm like, well, I was going to go and change the freaking song. I guess someone changed her. No, the teacher pulled out, told me to see me after class. I'm like, ah, oh, dear God, here we go. Wrote a letter to my mom and wouldn't let me have my CD back until I, until she signed it. I showed it to my mom. We read it in the car. She was laughing hysterically because she's the one that bought it for me. And, like, I cleared this with her beforehand, so I was like, okay. And then she basically responded, yeah, I bought this for him. So we were kind of laughing about that. And then as much as they were trying to, like, get me to listen to what other kids listen to or listen to Christian contemporary music, it just forced me to like more and more of what I like due to the fact that 
I mean, you were, I, was a, I was 13 years old. I'm not going to listen to authority figures try and tell me what to like and what not to like. On top right. of that, it gave me my own identity, and it gave me something else besides, especially because I live in Wisconsin, I was, and I'm a huge uh, Minnesota Vikings fan. So I was on my own on that front. Now I had something else to really go out go and really connect to that was also on my own and then from there went to high school and high school wasn't the best time especially at the start but that's when i really started listening to rise against and that's where everything fucking took off like really took off was right when i started listening to rise against freshman year of high school driving to school every single day in the fall of 2009 and i swear at least once a week or almost every single day pretty much at the radio station we listen either on the way to school or home from school save your plane Every fucking time. And my friend, my brother, my friends were like, oh, no, let's change the channel. I'm like, no, you better fucking not. Because I love that song. <laughs> and it just built up from there. So, and I've gone through some pretty shitty times in life. And music has been like the one consistent thing that has always been there to kind of like help out. So it kind of just was a no brainer after that. I mean, to really connect with it and really start to try and make something of it. I'm going to keep my oh. mouth shut. <laughs> Same. Cause I'm gonna keep because wow, I'm some people off, but uh, but yeah, that man, I feel your pain, dude. I feel <laughs> your fucking pain. I didn't I go to. A, I went to a Lutheran school. Oh, they were much worse. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, uh, Jason. So, how did you come up with the name Core Progression for your podcast? <laughs> oh man, so. If I remember correctly, so because I started the podcast back in, I want to say, I think I really got it going, like started the whole entire thing. I th- cause I actually got a, a my credit card statement, uh, the charge for this uh, website is called Podbean, which distributes it to both Spotify and Apple Music or an Apple podcast. I got charged with that on the 28th of February. So that had been a full three years, you know, of February 28th, 2022. So I was trying to think back like to that time, you know, what was I thinking about to co- bring up a name of the podcast? Mm. And honestly, one thing I thought about it was, I don't know what's the name of podcast. I don't know what's going to be catchy. I really just don't know. But I wanted to start something. So I'm like, I'm just going to name it something, make it somewhat similar to music, and just roll with it. And for some reason, I might have been watching a video from like Nick Nocturnal or something. And there might have been the thing that he talked about, Corporate Crush. And I just kind of like, that's it. Let's just go with that. And let's just go. Let's just work with it. We'll see what happens. Okay. So basically, I mean, there was really nothing special about it. I was listening to a lot of uh, like a lot of podcasts from uh, Gary Vee at the time and reading a lot of the Gary Vee books and shit. And one of those big things was like, you know, when it comes to a name, it's like, don't spend too much time on the name. Just, you know, kind of like pick something and go because think about Google. I mean, that was never a thought mm-hmm. of like Google, like but that's just a name that kind of probably came out of nowhere. And now it's a much known thing. I mean, Apple computers, they picked up, they picked a fruit for the name Apple. Come on. It can be something super simple. It's all about what you put behind it, all about, you know, the quality that becomes behind it, the product that becomes of it, behind it, everything. That's what really matters. The name is all about what's behind it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Apple. All right. John. Um, what do you like to do when you're not uh, doing podcasting and all that stuff? What hobbies do you have outside? Ooh. Okay. So uh, <laughs> let's, let, 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 let's think about how to answer this one. So, cause we're in the month of March right now. Here's one way, good way to put it. I mean, if through the first half of March for the first 12 days of March, so March 1st through March 12th, I was at six concerts in 12 days. I love going to those live shows. There's a whole different part of just like life that comes from those. And I'm addicted to going to a freaking mosh pit. If you get to give me a chance to throw down somewhere, I'm going to go freaking do it. Mm-hmm. Julian, you can absolutely attest to that from Blue Ridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. You nearly killed me in the Ice Nine Kills pit. <laughs> I mean, how fitting. <laughs> it's, and, and honestly, it's, it might happen again on uh, April 2nd in Chicago, Julian. So watch out. Oh. Now, I'm going to die during Motionless and White. That's what's going to be. <laughs> oh, You're going to get a scar above your eye. Just like you me. You guys got to be scar it's brothers. It's going to be a scarlet cross. It, it'll, oh, it'll, it'll only be, it'll only be worth it if I'm the one that actually gives it to him. It's like, this is the rite of passage, sir. <laughs> it is the end. But, but I mean, but, is, out, yeah. but outside of that, I mean, one other thing that I'm a big fan, like I, I always play, like I always played soccer ever since I was a kid. So I still, I still do that. And football. I end up. I love also yeah, football for you know you are everyone else around the world that's not in the U.S. Otherwise, I mean, I pretty much after work every single day. I'm always going to the gym 
And it's just something where it's like, yeah, you know, I like to do so I can play soccer and go in those mosh pits and just never, ever stop. But I like to go there because, like, there's a whole mental aspect that I have, in, like, ingrained in my brain for that. And it just helps, you know, with that. So I, there's another hobby there. But one thing I'm starting to get into a little bit more as of late is, uh, so uh, my car is kind of uh, old and not doing the best with certain things. So I, cause I had to take it in for a, uh, like a recall thing. And then my window wasn't working. So I had them check it out. They gave me a whole diagnostic report and everything. And they said they would fix it for everything that was wrong with it, that the dealer would fix it for more than what was actually the worth of the car, like double what the car was worth. So I'm like, well, do I still want to work, like have this car, get a new car, or anything? So one thing I'm going to kind of get into is like actually learning how to fix this whole entire thing. Okay. So I'm starting to get a little bit more into that aspect. Like when it comes to engineering and, and anything, I really don't care. But there is something about figuring out how to fix a car that just is starting to intrigue me. So I'm just going to kind of go for it. Hell yes. Oh, All right. oh hell yeah. So oh. yeah, so I'd say oh, sometimes, yeah. some, some of my hobbies outside of like everything with like the podcast and working and everything, some of them I'm pretty sure you guys would expect that the car one is kind of like, it's a little bit, you know, kind of from left field a little bit right now, but. I'm enjoying it, so fuck it. Yeah, and let's not forget as long, as long practicing the flute. It. Also practicing the flute. Only oh, <laughs> I've crappy flute series. Dude, I haven't, I haven't done a crappy flute video since February, so I haven't had the time to do it, and I haven't really had I mean, it's it, it'll come back at some point. I just don't know when. Heavy arms, so. <laughs> 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 yeah, AJ, go right ahead. All right. Um, so... Um, what are your least like favorite bands? Like, like what? What are some of the bands that you really hate very much? It's a call out. Ooh. Okay. Oh. So, this is a this is a tough one because there's very few bands that I would say that I hate or just completely am like against. It's <laughs> like. I like I could like I I mean you could put Blood and the Dance around there, but honestly I've probably never listened. I don't think I've ever actually listened to Blood and Dance Wars music. Mm. Don't. So, <laughs> don't. Um. Good God. Shoot. Uh, like there's so, there's just some people in music that kind of like when it comes down to like it kind of affects me wanting to listen to the band at times, and yeah, it's yeah. so I mean and, it, and it's it's like there's some like there's some songs like you know I'm gonna listen to them, but like. There's some things I just don't really kind of connect with. And one person would be like Slash from Guns N' Roses. So I don't listen to a lot of Guns N' Roses based off of a lot of less crazy stuff that Slash has done. I, st- I mean, anything like stuff off of Appetite for Destruction, like Welcome to the Jungle, Sweet Child of Mine, Paradise City. Yeah, like that stuff you can really, or November Rain. Like I still like that stuff, but it's not something I'm really going to fully go out of my way and listen to because I just don't really care for Slash. And the same thing with kind of like Gene Simmons and Kiss. Where it's like I'm not like I enjoy Kiss, but I'm not gonna go fully out of my way to listen to him because of that fact. But uh, here's another one that might kind of come as a little bit of surprise to you. I actually got an offer two weeks ago for an interview with someone that I'm gonna tell you guys who it is, and I'm pretty sure Julian's gonna cringe when I say the name. Can I guess? Manny, you can guess. Is it Jarris Johnson? No. Okay. I know Julian doesn't. (laughs) Not in the needle fish. First of all, it's uh. Are you sure you're not talking about Axl Rose? <laughs> you said Slash. Fuck, you're right. My God. Holy <laughs> crap! That's the biggest brain fart I think I've had the whole time. Slash doing what? My what problem. Did Slash ever do to my, you? My bad, guys. Axl Rose, not Slash. What the fuck was I thinking? That's on me. <laughs> Apologize, Slash. Right it. now. Sorry, Slash. I, we love Sorry, Slash. Job. I've I've been on I've not been able to sleep the past two nights, and I'm just running on pure adrenaline at the moment. So my mind might <laughs> slip a little bit of time. So that was the biggest brain fart I've had of the whole entire I week. I mean, so. Axel Rose sounds like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Especially nowadays, Jesus Christ, he sucks live. My God. Yeah. So I should I should rephrase it. Axel Rose, not Slash. My bad. I'm glad my I don't bad. like Guns and Roses. Can I guess that one band you almost got on? Yeah, take a guess. Is it Tommy Vexed? That's correct. Oh. Yeah, I already knew. Oh, I already knew. oh my oh. God. And I'm not going to lie, I thought, about, I thought about doing it. You just wouldn't have told <gasps> Julian. You just come up with the promo videos. <laughs> That's kind of what I would have done, but I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about it, and there was one, there was, like, the, like, I mean, 
if I looked at it and I thought about it, like one of the major sides of doing potentially doing something like it was, you know, people know the name, people know the drama that happened around there. And all of a sudden you see that pop up. I mean, it is an interest point. It does, it does bring some more eyes and ears onto the podcast and interest. But there was one major reason why I did not want to do it. And it was the reason why I didn't do it. Are you going to say it? Yeah. The reason is because of, uh, it's because of Doc Coyle, honestly. When, mm -hmm. because I, I have had Doc on the podcast before. And when we had like talked about that, he kept everything super professional. He, when it came to anything with Tommy, he's like, I don't really want to dive into that that much, but I know I'm going to have to talk about it. So here's like the two minute thing of like kind of what's going on because there's a lot of still stuff on the legal side of things. And we focused the whole entire podcast on, okay, now Tommy's out. What happened with getting the new lead singer? Like, how did you guys bring DL into it? And through what Doc Coyle has done, along with the work that he has put in with many other bands that I have brought on the podcast that I know of and a lot of, and just everything around, like I have a lot of respect for the guy and yeah. I didn't want to bring Tommy on and have, you know, this whole, have him start bashing bad wolves, start having him bash Doc Coyle and have that disrespect there mm -hmm. when I'm trying to have an open conversation about, you know, what, basically kind of what Tommy is do, doing in the music. I didn't want to create that whole entire realm of disrespect, nor give Tommy the platform to do something like that. So I said, no, yeah, he's not worth it. And Don't plus, give him the like, platform. Mm -hmm. And plus, like, platform to begin with. politics is insane, and it's like, like that's exactly you have what I'm to saying. Hear his political views and all that, and you don't want to. You just want to hear what he's talking about in the music business. But let's not do that. Um, I, I don't. Here's the thing with me. I, it, it. He doesn't piss me off for his political views. I don't give a shit. But uh -huh. it's just it's the way he, his attitude is. Oh yeah. He has he, big oh, ego. And the way he disrespects people all the time and i will yep. never forgive him for how he treated anthony of defy the tyrants i will never fucking forgive him for that but so uh, i'll say that was another secondary reason too because of how how big of a supporter anthony has been on the podcast how much he has been around music as well and you know supporting all of us as well and i respect anthony a hell of a lot more than i respect tommy beck so i didn't want to again give tommy a platform to potentially do something like that especially you know who knows, all of a sudden, you know, I, I set up that interview with Tommy if I did, and he takes a look at the podcast and sees that I've, you know, talked with Doc Coyle, I've talked with Anthony from the Five of the Tyrants, I don't want to give him room to start a bunch of crap and then have me try and have an open conversation about this and then turn it into a whole entire shouting match. I just wasn't, it just wasn't worth it. Yeah, I'd right. rather, I rather talk with MGK than Tommy Vex. Anyway, let's move I'd on. I'd rather just punch myself right in the face. I think everyone would. But anyway... <laughs> I'd just rather punch Tommy Vex in the face. Maddie, you I go ahead and ask the next okay. question. Um, so, the million dollar question that I'm surprised nobody asked. What made you want to start podcasting and interviewing bands? Ooh. Oh. Okay. So, when it came to podcasting, basically the whole entire reason I wanted to do it was because when I started everything originally with the whole My Song of the Day thing, the whole Alexa skill portion of it, I, and then the YouTube channel file, I just wanted to add something to it, and I didn't know exactly what to add. And the reason why I land on the podcast, again, it's all going to kind of go from the whole entire Gary V thing. It was just to put something else out there and just try tried something new. I didn't really want to try anything on TikTok at the moment. Again, this was like early 2019 because, honestly, I just didn't care. Like I, when it comes to TikTok, it's still not my thing. I'm on there more now when it comes to putting a bunch of the stuff from the core progression podcast on there, a bunch of the different shorts, but it's still something that I'm just not that connected with. But again, I know I have to be on there when it came to the podcast. though, it was something that I, you know, I didn't know exactly what to do, but I just wanted to try something different. And it also kind of gave me a, a, like a way to just start something different where all of a sudden it's, I can talk about music just, and just can go from there and just see what happens. And you never know what might happen. When I started it, though, it was like the first couple episodes. I mean, they were pretty rough, not going to lie, but it was something to try out. It was something new. And I don't remember exactly who brought up interviewing bands. It might have actually been this woman named Kathy from Texas because I connected with her uh, from, you know, because she was she's a huge Disturbed fan. She's probably the biggest Disturbed fan I know. A lot more of a Disturbed fan than I am. And, like, we were connected on that kind of stuff, especially when uh, Evolution came out and then – Right as the podcast was starting, like after the first episode, like I went to go see Disturb in Chicago and she had actually flown up for the show. So I got to watch the show with her right from like on, on the floor, right at the barricade, basically right by John Moyer, which was fucking awesome. 
But what ended up happening after that was when it came to the band, she was actually the one that connected me with my first two bands I ever actually interviewed with. One, The first one ever was called Ascending from Ashes. And I don't think they're a band anymore because that was the first one I ever did, and I don't know what ever happened to them. But, and that one I was kind of cool with, but it was like, it just, nothing really like sparked the full interest more of the podcast when it came to interviewing bands. It wasn't until the second band interview I ever did, and it was the second band that Kathy ever showed me, was the one that really brought more of the, like, me kind of looking at it, like, this is kind of fun. Like, this is what I really like to do. And it was the first time I got to interview Jonathan Norris from Kim Collapse. And at that point, Kim Collapse maybe had like 7,000 monthly stream, like, like listeners on wow. uh, Spotify. That was it. This was June of 2019. And through that, like all of a sudden, like Jonathan and I became friends. And then I started interviewing some other bands. And at that time, there was one other band that really stuck out to me during this early period. I wasn't even doing video interviews at this point. This was all over the freaking phone. The other one that stuck out to me was the girls from GFM. Because we had a lot of fun on the podcast for that one, too. Then all of a sudden, at the end of 2019, I'm like, I got, I want to keep interviewing bands, but I want to, you know, bring this a little bit more of a, make it a little bit more of a cool thing. So I want to interview them and do the whole entire video thing put on YouTube. And again, the first two I did, Jonathan Norris came collapsed and GFM. Those were the first two video interviews as well. So what ended up really sparking it even more so was the fact that I had started doing the band, the band interviews and I was enjoying it. And then March of 2020 hit. It was the fucking pandemic. Everything shut down. And all of a sudden, you know, I love going to concerts. That was completely taken away, as, as, as it was for all of us. And then, you know, mm. seeing friends and whatnot, going out, doing stuff, like, it was pretty much like a farce. Like, everything was gone. But I also looked at that and thought, what's one thing that I really like at this point that I can still do? And it was working on the music stuff. And when it comes to the podcast, interviewing these bands. Like, I was having so much fun with it, so I wanted to keep it rolling. And I thought, it's the freaking pandemic. All these bands are going to be on the shelf right now. What, what can they do right now? They can connect with people on social media. They can work on new music remotely. And that's about it. So <laughs> why not give them a place where they can actually do that? And I had a shit ton of fun doing that, especially early on in 2020, because I was interviewing bands that, you know, I, shit, I don't think anyone was really interviewing because of how small they were. But that was what I wanted to do is I wanted to start out small, build up the podcast, build up the reputation of the podcast and slowly build the, the uh, like the connections from there and keep it going to the point where, I mean, now it's when I get to record a podcast, it's my favorite thing to do. I can be as dead tired as possible. I could just be like, you know, I don't want to do this. Shit. I don't want to do it. Like, I'm just tired. I don't want to do this. Once I sit down, get everything set up, and the Zoom call starts, and I see that person who or the band or whoever is going to be on the call jump in and it says, you know, they're in the waiting room. Just admit them. My energy level goes through the freaking roof, and then we just roll with it. Like, it's, mm. it's something that just brings happiness to me at every turn of, you know, anything. And to be able to then also connect with these people and connect with these bands outside of the podcast as well, continue these connections, continue these friendships to the point where, I mean, when I went to go see the From Ashes to New tour for, because it was From Ashes to New, their guitarist Lance was on the podcast. No one from Fire From The Gods been on the podcast yet. From Blind Channel, both, uh, I gotta get, it was Nico and I, I'm going to feel bad for forgetting the other guy's name. Wow. <laughs> Shoot. I had it in my head earlier. It was, it's both the vocalists though, because they were on the podcast and then above snakes, uh, the lead singer, Johnny was on the podcast before the tour. And of course, Jonathan Norris from Kim claps, being able to connect these people and actually show like my face and like being, you know, say hi to them and just be there. How, like how, like how cool is that? I got to a point where all of a sudden during the first show, it was like towards the end of King Claps' set, Jonathan Norris actually said hi to me <laughs> during the middle, like towards the end of the set, in the middle of the song. Then the next night I went, during the first song, he said, hey, Kevin, literally in the middle of the first song, he just broke it. It was like, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, able, it's being able to create these connections and continue to build up on them and also be able to continue to support these bands and just really be able to create that positivity that, you know, we, we want to see in rock and metal. You want to see people that are going to be there for the music. They're going to be there for the musicians. And that's one thing that, especially if you're starting, it's like, I built up these friendships. I want to be there for these people. I want to see them as much as possible, which is why on Saturday or, or this upcoming Saturday, well, after we're shooting this, I'm going down to Belvedere, Illinois to see the fit for a King tour for pretty much the, the sole reason of avoid is opening that whole entire show. 
I've had Benny on the podcast for, and I've talked to Benny a good number of times since then. I was supposed to see them open for Ice Nine Kills, but their van broke down. They weren't able to make it. And Benny messaged me six minutes before the show was supposed to start. And I was like, oh, darn. But, you know, I understand it. Now I actually get to go and see them perform live. I get to beat a mosh pit for them. And then after the show, I get to go say hi to Benny, actually show my face and be like, hey, man, what's up? And then we get to talk for a little bit. If I'm going to buy him, I'll buy him a beer. That's one of my things. I'll, I'll First round's on me. I always say that at the end of the podcast because I freaking mean it. It's just creating those relationships just ended up just really building up on top of that. And just the positivity that was end up being brought from it on top of the positivity that it kept in my life during the beginning portions of the pandemic, during the shutdown, everything. That's why I really wanted to keep going on it. Yeah. And you know, it's funny the day before <laughs> that show that you're supposed to see a void on was liar than life. Mm -hmm. I got to see a void before you. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Julian, they're coming out with two new songs uh, tonight. I know. Yeah. So I get to add, like my and I'm, I did the same thing with King Collapse when they came out with their new song because they dropped it last Friday. I had not listened to the song. I first wanted to listen to the song. I wanted to listen to it live. Like I wanted to have that experience. I'm gonna do the same thing with the Void. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah dude. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was Stone Cold Day. Uh, Wyatt, you go ahead. All right. Let me think of another question. Me who actually is. Okay, I, I'm prepared to do that. But, uh, uh, you know what? When you, Wyatt... know what? you all can come back to me. Let me think. Okay, Jason, you go then. So, how did you come up with the name MSOTD before you transitioned to just chord progression? Oh, that's a simple one, because originally it was my song of the day, and I just basically used the first initials of each word. Oh. And the, and, and the reason for that was just because, so, kind of, I mean, I started out with the whole my song. I, I just, again, that was the same thing. It was just pick a name and just go from there. But then the reason why I shortened the name up initially and changed it was because I had a conversation with a person named, uh, his name is Joe Alfano. And great guy, Joel Fano. So what he ended up, do, so he's somebody that ends up doing a lot of different social media connection for connecting for a lot of these like up and coming bands, these smaller bands and really working on that. He helped the, and we got connected basically through uh Keem collapse and then we got connected through uh, a couple of the other bands that he's worked. He was the one that got me the interview with Benny from avoid uh, awake at last. He helped me out with, uh, Trying to think of some of the other ones he helped me out with. There, there have been a couple of them. Etchin Embers was one. Uh, he was gonna help me out with the Saul one, but then he's like, "I'm not sure. They might think you're too big." And then all of a sudden, I started. I uh, got connected with Adam Splitter PR, <laughs> and then two weeks after I got connected with them, Saul was ready to drop their album, and I got an interview with with Blake <laughs> from yeah. them. So I was just like, was "Like, ha, gotcha." But it was all <laughs> good fun. And what the conversation I had with him was, he's like, "Why'd you pick the name?" And I said, "I just picked it." Like there was something. He's like, "Well, it kind of limits you." to what you could possibly do. So that's why I shorten it up because then it kind of, again, it, it, the name doesn't necessarily limit me as much, but then all of a sudden it was like, you know, going forward through it when I got into August of 2021, that's when I'm like, you know what? The podcast is the thing that I want to do the most. The podcast is the most successful part of this whole entire thing. So let's focus in on the podcast and really focus in on that while not necessarily fully changing like the other stuff that we're doing. Of course, like the other YouTube videos I was doing, I cut those out basically just because of the podcast. Uh, the live streams still happen though because those are always fun as shit. And I didn't want to mess. Yeah, didn't want to mess up those. So that's kind of how the whole entire that kind of whole entire name thing happened. Maddie. Oh, okay. Maddie, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Maddie? <laughs> yeah. So I I I was start, starting to think back to when Julian and I were playing video games, and every time we see fireflies in a game, we start singing fireflies like Tom DeLonge. Fireflies! Oh, and then, <laughs> where, are, and, where are you? And Fire then I was, and then, and then Hawthorne Heights popped into my head, and then I I heard for some reason, because I can't make it on my own. <laughs> because my heart is Boy, in Ohio. I can't not hear songs in my head without hearing Tom DeLonge sing it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Yeah. By the way, I helped you create this logo. <laughs> yeah, Julian was the one that created that logo or helped create that logo and we used it for a good shoot, amount of time. Over a year. 
Yeah, like a year and a half. Yeah. Before you took it, before you changed everything. Yeah, before before it made everything straight core progression podcast. So it was it was nothing against your logo, man. Nothing against your logo. It was, it was a, I mean, it was I've pure, heard it all before. It was a pure business decision to focus more on the podcast. Wait. Wait, That's imagine fine. Tom DeLong seeing our in the arms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Wyatt, you, you got a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, what what was your um best experience ever attending like band like concerts and festivals and such? Kevin, only one. You can only pick one. The only one. Oh God, I can only the pick only one. Ones. The only ones. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention two before I'm gonna mention two quickly before I give like the actual like the re- the one behind there. Like honorable mentions. So the two honorable mentions I'm gonna give are Julian. You were there for Blue Ridge, and the reason is because. The way the fa- – like, it, again, I talked about this on the on live stream. I've talked about this plenty of times. The way it was put together by the by the people that put it together was an absolute shit show just yeah. to put it lightly. But the way that the bands and the fans were able to inter- – were interacted with each other and the way that the fans interacted alongside each, alongside each other to make sure it was a whole family vibe, I mean, we made it as fun as possible and we made it as safe as possible given the circumstances. So that was also – one. The other one that sticks out in my head, as I don't mention, is the first time I got to see Ice Nine Kills live because it just – that was the first time I ever saw a band live that I had no idea who they were, and I was so captivated by that live performance that I had to go out and find out as much as I could about this band and listen to this band from that moment. And so – and that I mean, I look at that moment, I'm like, I didn't even know who Ice Nine Kills was. And at that moment, I'm like, this is going to be one of my – this could easily be one of my favorite bands. It was the only time I've ever actually stayed long after a show for the specific reason of trying to buy some merch. Like I really just I'm either do it beforehand or I'll leave, but like that one I'm like I need to get a freaking shirt and that kind of grew from there. But the one that stands out the most, the one that stands out the most to me is um, so it's 2017, I think it was it was like late September, maybe the last day in September, and 2017 and I mean I mentioned this plenty of times. 2017 was the worst year of my life, and you know probably anywhere between I would say September through. Probably, oh shit, where'd I go? To September, probably up until Christmas was just the worst period of time you could possibly imagine where, I mean, I hated myself. I didn't want to do anything. I hated everything about life and it just, mm-hmm. it just was not good in any sort of capacity. And when it came to music as well, like I was listening, like the, the bands that resonated with the most during that time were 30 Seconds to Mars and Skillet. And yes, Julian, you could probably cringe on that one right now. <laughs> Uh, flashback to yesterday. <laughs> flashback to yesterday, and you would expect me to say "Rise Against," but the but I wasn't for this for a main reason. One was because so the girl I was dating from you know summer of 2016 through summer of 2017, we met at a Rise Against concert. So and and we so she liked Rise Against, of course. You know, Rise Against is my favorite band, and anytime I listened to anything that wasn't off of the Wolves album. Like there was always some sort of connection, like mindful connection to her. And what I was going through the time, I put a lot of the uh, mental blame on that situation and the relationship that had deteriorated, even though that wasn't the main thing that ended up being the reason why I was such a miserable prick at the time and just ho- like in a horrible mind space. But that was the thing that I thought it was. It ended up being something completely different, but so anytime I listen to anything from Rise Against, like there would be some sort of mental connection to that situation, and it just would it just made me not want to listen to it anymore. And the reason I put the Wolves album as an exception was because the Wolves album came out right before her and I broke up. So there was none of that positive connection between anything off of the Wolves album and that situation. So there was some sort of connection still there, some sort of glimmer of hope. So there was a show, uh, there was a festival in a uh, small little festival in Janesville, Wisconsin called JJ Sonic Boom. And in the first, and there was a two night thing. They played it at the Janesville regional airport. So they had two stages side by side. And I bought, I, you had to buy tickets for both nights. I only wanted to go the first night. Now I look back at the lineup and the lineup was pretty freaking sick. So I should have gone both days, but I only went the first night because rise against was headlining. I got there 
And I got there late because I just wanted to go see Rise Against. That's all I cared about, and that's all I wanted to go and do. So I got there, and on the stage that Rise Against was going to end up headlining on was Thrice was closing out their set when I got there. All of a sudden, on the next stage was Stone Sour. I did mm-hmm. not move. Like, I, like, I, I watched Stone Sour perform, but I didn't really move from where I was because I want to be as close as possible for Rise Against. And I was just, like, I was still miserable, hated my life. Anytime I thought about anything, couldn't sleep no matter what. Anytime I thought about anything, I always related to something negative that was going on in my life and just the negative emotions. All of a sudden, here comes Rise Against. They go on stage and they hit the first note of, I think they opened up with the titular song Wolves from the Wolves album. From that first note, all of a sudden, I just stopped caring about what was going on. I didn't really feel miserable anymore and then throughout the whole entire set i just didn't like i just i wouldn't say i felt it like i just didn't feel miserable again at all i felt content i actually felt like i was enjoying myself and then they ended with savior and that was the first time ever that i said fuck it i'm going into the pit so i did and like there was definitely some emotion that was coming out in the pit and it all kind like it all kind of started coming out of me when at the end of the song, you know, all of a sudden people are high-fiving each other. People are, you know, giving each other the bro hugs, everything around there. And it just hits so hard for like a concert thing where it just, yeah, it wasn't the, it wasn't, wasn't the most impressive concert. No, no, it wasn't the most impressive. It wasn't the most impressive Rise Against Heaven I've been to. But my God, did it just mean the world to, even though life was about to get even more difficult and even crappier over the next two, two and a half months. I had my favorite band back. Every time I listened to Savior, I had, like, I think about it, and only positive thoughts were happening. Only those positive emotions were coming through once again. I listened to stuff off of the Suffer and the Witness. I listened to Swing Life Away. And now there's positivity coming through it once again. That was why, I, that's why that's the most, like, the one that's the most important concert, the best concert I've probably been to, just because of the emotional connection that I had to it. And from there, once all of a sudden I kind of was able to start breaking out of that whole entire depression, uh, you know, just con- like no care for, for life or anything like that, and just hating myself. Once I started to break out of that, right, that, that whole entire – again, it was Savior. That was kind of the thing that start, made me start trying to find something to do in music. It was the reason I started mm-hmm. the whole Lexus skill for uh, my Song of the Day stuff. It was the – like that show kind of was the absolute like – emotional starting point for everything that I've done since. That's awesome. I'm That's surprised, awesome. I was surprised you didn't say when we faced off for the ghost inside. I'm surprised that wasn't mentioned. <laughs> I put in Blue Ridge as a whole entire thing, man. I mean, it kind of got wrapped up in there. I mean, there's there was a lot of different things that happened during Blue Ridge. There was that. There was me basically running the pit for the Rise Against show. There was when we, there was when the uh, Icon Pit Crew beat the shit out of that uh, crowd killer during We Came as Romans. Oh, I was there for that. Oh, <laughs> it. That guy deserved it because he did the exact same thing the day beforehand during Bear Tooth, and we told him to stop. But we didn't beat it. We didn't beat him up, but we removed him from from the uh, from the area. But when he did it again, you got to suffer the consequences, my friend. <laughs> that w- oh, I was there for that. It was brutal. <laughs> well, was someone just fully brutal or something someone was just beating people actually like punching people and like, trying to oh. like for we came as romans he swung and hit the mosh ref in the face you don't do that that happens a lot at concerts when i saw him do that i was about ready to fucking kill yeah. him dude when i when i saw that because i was on the i, I was going like my momentum was carrying me the other side of the pit i quickly tried to pivot and turn but by the time i pivoted and turned there were like 20 people going after him. i'm like you guys got this i'm good <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some severe issues like that um, on concerts. Yeah, that happens more than you think. But I mean, you definitely see a, like a little pumps concert. That was terrible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> little pump. Josh, you got one. Yeah. Um, what do you enjoy about being a uh, podcaster and a content creator? Like, what is what do you enjoy about doing that kind of stuff? The freedom. So that's basically the, the the quickest way to put it is the freedom and the reason behind that is like if i think about going back into you know go back to college and whatnot and whatever i was studying it was like you know i had to take those crappy gen eds and stuff but like when it came to picking major it was what i wanted to go and study it's what i wanted to learn about 
It's what I want to do. And then when it came to putting in the work and all that stuff, it was the only person that I had to basically, it's like, you know, I had to turn to my stuff and all of a sudden, you know, you know, get grades and shit. But when it came down to like actually creating this stuff in the way I wanted to be done, it was all on me. The person I answered to at that point was me. And I loved having that idea of like, you know, I'm working on something for myself. So when it came to the kind of like, yeah, especially my first job out of college, which was really the reason why everything completely like sh- my life completely went to shit was because I was working for someone else and I, it was like a dead end kind of thing. And there was no freedom there. There was, there was, it felt like life was boring being the, doing the content creation, doing all the podcasts and stuff. It's something I'm doing for myself. It's something that I want to do. It's something that is fully on me and I, and with the effort that gets put in there is however much effort I want to put in there. And the person I have to answer to again is me. So that's the thing I enjoy about the most is just the fact that it's my thing where I can do whatever the hell I want with it, where whenever, however big I want to make it, I have, to, it's, I'm going to be putting in the effort for it, but it's how much effort do you want to put in for it? And I want to have, basically it's, I want to bet on me more than anybody else. I don't want to bet, have my life basically bet on someone else. Yeah. If that makes sense. That definitely makes sense for sure. Trust me, I, me, me and Devin both definitely deal with that. Mm-hmm. All team creators, but, but yeah. AJ, you're up. Um, yeah, man. Um, if you, okay, this is, I don't think you will ever do this, but like, if you had to make up a band and then like, and then like name some bands, like, who would you like, like, to tour with even though you're not really in a part of the band but um but if you had one what um what band should you tour with so if i okay. if you were, if you're in a band what bands would you like to tour with basically what's okay. your dream tour yeah. lineup to play with so i'm gonna it's like when it, so okay. i'm gonna think about this i'm actually gonna think about this in a way where like this, like the tour could actually happen because I would love to be like, oh, Rise Against and Ice Nine Kills, but they're never gonna go on tour together. How do you, you know? know? You never exactly. know. Exactly, you don't know that. Look at fucking Ice Nine Kills. Literally just played with Metallica and Greta Van Fleet. Yeah, like you yeah. don't know. I'm I'm just gonna be realistic. But I just don't see it happening though. So. Well, me and Julian have fucking hope for you. God. <laughs> yeah, just just wait. Yeah. Yeah, so be, be rise against ice nine kills and kingdom collapse bitch <laughs> just, just to spite you we're gonna make it happen right now all of a yeah. sudden I'm, I'm gonna be in, yeah just and then all of a sudden during the set for king collapse i'm gonna be in the middle of the crowd i'll somebody hear jonathan just go hey kevin, hey, kevin. <laughs> listen hey, all i'm saying is if they don't have hey kevin in a song i don't want it dude you should, i got we gotta to talk to kingdom collapse about that like, but make a song make a song called hey oh, kevin just about kevin just a- <laughs> nah, dude. Let them let them roll with what they're doing because the song they just came out with called "Save Me from Myself." Holy shit, oh, is man. that a fucking great song? It's good. Yeah. So, I put it like honestly, I'd say even though I'd say for if, like if I was gonna be in a band though, I'd love to do metalcore just for the fact that's like that's that's mm-hmm. kind of like even though it's one of the more recent ones that I've gotten into for genres, it's just the fun that's around there. It's just it can be it's so much fun. It's just the intensity, the energy behind there, and the bands I'd like to tour with. So from a small, like, grow, like, again, I'm going to go from, like, bottom to top. So give me, you said four, correct? Yeah. So because they're on tour right now with a bunch of metalcore bands right now and their style kind of does fit, one is going to be a void. Those guys are freaking hysterical, especially They're <laughs> and. Bad. Spending like a month, month and a half on a road on the road playing with them would be absolutely, you know, insane. Even if I was, you know, on a band that was, you know, like say, you know, two or three, you know, you know, bands later on the bill. Yeah, I would be in the crowd just watch freaking avoid, like every night. Hmm. Um, you're gonna hate me even more. I actually got to hang out with avoid at the VIP area later than life. I'm not hating you for that. I'm gonna see him on. I'm gonna see him on Saturday. I'm gonna hang out with him then. <laughs> I can't this shit. Like I, we got, we literally just, we watched. I, I, I think we watched. Uh, we watched Wage War together. It was awesome. Nice. And, and continue. Continue. Um, second on that bill. Oh man, I just had. Honestly, they're. I would say they're not really metalcore, but 
their style would de- like their flow and their just energy would definitely fit in with the style. Like I saw them twice of, over the weekend. But I'm gonna go up for Mashes to new. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Then number three, we're gonna go on the heavier side of things, but we're also gonna keep it just like just as much fun. Mm-hmm. We're gonna keep it even more fun, and we're just gonna you know, we're gonna bring the hype a hype for this one. Yep, Electric Callboy for number three, <laughs> and then to top it all off. Ice Nine Kills. <laughs> Abso-fucking-lutely Ice Nine Kills. I love how no one heard ice the nine word kills. I said after Kevin said, we're going to go on the heavy side. Slaughter to prevail. I just went slaughter to I, prevail. Lorna Shore. Lorna Shore. Yes. yes. I, I, I'd say if I, was in a, if I was in a band, it would be a metalcore band in the four, like a tour that I like to be on. It's like, you know, you put four other bands in there. Avoid from Ashes to New, Electric Callboy, Ice Nine Kills. Make it happen. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm Lightning McQueen. Wow. Wow. That's so cool. Wow. (laughs) Cow. Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) Let's move on. Uh, That that's actually an awesome. I actually can we make that tour happen, please? (laughs) Like, I actually want that tour. (laughs) Um, I'm not gonna lie, three of those four like. They might all be in Vegas that weekend for like the when we were young fest, but only Ice Nine Kills be playing when we were, were young. <laughs> the oh. other three though, pancakes in the pit, y'all. <laughs> pancakes in the pit. What the fuck is up, Denny's? <laughs> what the fuck is up, Denny? If if all those bands that are playing do not say that when they start the show, I don't fucking want it. Imagine. Well, from from what I know right now, the only from what I know right now, out of those three, I'm a 99% certain that Electric Callboy is on there. 100%. You, you know what'd be funny? Imagine they got Kingdom Collapse. They start by saying, "What the fuck is up, Denny's?" I get what the fuck is up, Kevin <laughs> and Denny's. What the fuck is up, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want up, that now. Holy I shit. want that so bad. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to uh, my next question. Now, we're going to do, after this, we're going to do two more rounds of questions and then get into the turnover. So. Two more rounds of questions, like, around fully? Because, I mean, we're already, like, at an hour and 12 minutes for this bad boy. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do one more round then, just in case. Just one more round. Just do, just one more round of it. But uh, no, I'm looking at the clock. I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> I still got to put together a whole entire podcast after this. I'm waiting for Beartooth. Tooth. tooth. I need to get that right off. Listen, you don't understand. If I could flip my camera around, I would. All right. So here's my question. What is the worst live band you've ever seen? Because I have many. (laughs) Worst live band I've ever seen. I have one that people hate me for. (laughs) Ooh. Um... Okay, I got it. You're not gonna expect this to come from me, honestly, though. Based, oh, it's, it's 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 not it's not ba- it's not, ba- it's, not ba- it's not because it's not because you're not expecting me to you know it's that because it's an artist I like. It's because it's an artist you would never expect me to actually go see live. Oh no. Modest Yahoo. Huh? Who say who with the what now? Yeah, what? Modest Yahoo. I don't know okay. who the fuck that is. I was going to say, I prevail. I'm being <laughs> serious. They were not. I prevail? Yeah, they weren't really that good when I saw them. Like, the energy of the crowd was just, like, not good. Kevin knows exactly what fucking tour I'm talking about, too. I know exactly what tour you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. The crowd did not, like, it was, they just were not having a good time. That lineup was wrong. <laughs> I prevail should have been before Beartooth. Yeah, it would have, it would have, even though I Prevail is a bigger band than Bears with the energy flow of the show would have been much better having I Prevail go on before Caleb Shomo not trying to follow Caleb Shomo. That's what I'm saying. I don't, uh, <laughs> Kevin, what makes you think that they were a bigger band though than Beartooth? Based on size and what uh, it was a conversation I, I also had. Was. It was, it was a based on, a lot based on a conversation I had on the podcast I shot uh, the day before we did this one with the band Generation Underground because we talked about some of this stuff and we talked about bands that have come out, that have basically come out since like, let's say 2002. After 2002, 
what bands that are active that have come out since 2002 that could go out on their own and sell out a 5,000 capacity within like stage, same or that, or like stage within rock and metal. And we could be, we could, we came up with four pretty much. However, the fifth one that was on that we were teetering on was I prevail, honestly. Yeah. And I mean, the four we came up with were five finger death punch shine down. Yes. A day to remember. 100%. And bring me the horizon. Mm-hmm. 100 percent all four of those completely agree i mean i prevail could work because they've they've sold out red rocks so yeah so that's kind of like where i look at that where it's like they're definitely like when it comes to that size yeah they're bigger than bear tooth but when it comes to that kind of a show having i prevail before bear tooth if you give it them it makes the equal, more sense it just makes more sense with the flow of the show exactly or just not have I prevail on the tour. To begin yeah, with. that was honestly like a weird like tour, it, to be honest. Honestly, not really. Again, it, it wouldn't have been that weird if you had I prevail before Beartooth, though. But That's again, what I'm saying. Or, like if they if they were before Beartooth, it would have been perfect. It would have been fine. Or they just don't play stuff off a of trauma. Mm-hmm. Well, because because you think about it too, who there's barely there's not that many bands that can create a show that's going to have the energy that's going to follow up Beartooth and have the crowd still engaged. Oh. But a day to remember is one of those bands. A day to remember is one of those bands, one hundred percent. Motionless is one of those yeah. bands. Uh, exactly. I, honestly, like when they, I I, I believe uh, when Motionless <laughs> and Beartooth did their tour, they switched off. Mm-hmm. headliners yeah. for a different show so honestly it could work either way both bands are just as big and it works so well for them absolutely yep all right so yeah we need to figure out who the fuck that artist was <laughs> that you said was the worst yep modest yahoo so the reason so quickly the reason is because i saw him play it like i think it was Summerfest here in milwaukee maybe 2013 and it was someone that my my best friend wanted to kind of go and see and like i was like yeah let's go why not just give it a, give it a chance but um, there were some technical issues that were around the, the time, like around the stage. I get it, you know, the sound wasn't perfect, but it wasn't based off of the fact that the sound wasn't good. It was off of Modest Yahoo's attitude during that. All he was doing for 25 minutes was complaining, <laughs> bitching at the sound, and bitching at the festival. And then when he went out, and then when you know, after 25 minutes, after they finally got the audio going, and you know, everything actually finally worked, he just didn't like like the. The amount of care and the amount of just actual showmanship there and the amount of integrity behind there was not was zero to none. So it was just kind of like, why if you're going to complain so much, all of a sudden now it's going to work and you're, a lot of people came out to see the show and you're just going to come out with no care in the world and just be like, whatever, fuck it, who cares? Yeah. We jumped out and we entered, we, we saw, and then he wanted to go, my buddy wanted to go and see whoever was playing to the stage next to us. And I think it was a woman named Ingrid Michelson who's got more of this like hippie folk kind of thing. And him and I went into some hippie dance circle and had a much better time. Yeah. Honestly, that sounds like something Axl Rose would do and probably like has done. Aaron probably. Mm-hmm. And that's Aaron a- Lewis, yeah. Seriously, like that, that legitimately that's how Aaron Lewis was at Louder Than Life. And like, God, MGK was bad. Uh, fucking Jane's Addiction was awful. Like, I cannot believe how awful they were. But. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's do one last round of questions, then we'll get to the turnover and then some games. So, uh, Matt, take it away. Okay, so I won't be too evil with this one. I could have I could have just said you have to pick only one, but I'm giving you the option of five. The only one. <laughs> what are your top five favorite interviews that you've ever done? Oh. You can only pick five. I can only pick five. You can only pick five. <laughs> And this okay. doesn't have to be like in order. It's just random. All righty. So, All right. um, w- one, I'll go with any time I've interviewed Jonathan Norris from Came Collapse. Just okay. the camaraderie and the friendship that was brought up during that has been nothing short of incredible. And number two, I'm going to put GFM in there as well for the, pretty much the exact same reason. I knew they'd be on there. Uh, number th- on a third, Joey Arena from the band Outlier. Reason being is because his his like his mindset on certain things. He's very brash about certain things, but he's also very intel like very intelligent and thinks a lot of things through. But when he presents them, it's very brash, very upfront. And the conversations that we've had around that, when it comes to the first time that we talked, when it comes to the second time we talked with his synthwave project, when he brought on Justin DeBleek 
to that podcast. So I got to interview Joey and Justin and then getting to meet uh, Joey in person in, I want to say October, then doing another one with him in December. It was, it got to a point where every time we have a conversation, it's just something that I'm, I always talk about, like I talk about when it came to the podcast, like I always get energy when I do stuff. When it came to talking with Joey, like, or Joey arena, there was just this added, just like level of just like, Whoa, this is fun. So there's just that that adds on to it. So anytime I get a chance to talk to Joey, like that's always a favorite of mine. Um, let's see, I got two more I can pick. Yep. See, now this is where it gets tough because like there's so many I want to go with. <laughs> um, <laughs> so number I'm on the fourth one. You guys will be able to agree with this one. I'm going to go with the guys in caskets. Hell yeah. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. The first time I got to talk to him was all was basically because I saw Loudwire had a whole entire thing when they changed the name from uh, captives to caskets. And I reached out to him because I wanted to know what the hell happened. That was it. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then the conversation we had off of that, it was just it, it was a lot of fun just to be able to talk to him. And then the connection that we made off of that, everyone came out with Lost Souls. And then the interview we did about the album and then Matt talking about the final say about and really bringing all that to light and just all of a sudden hearing the power that was behind that song and the story that was behind it, it absolutely blew my mind. The continued stuff that they've done. And then in November, the video you guys put together for me with all that, that was absolutely fantastic. Because again, thank you for that. That yeah. just added so oh, much no, more yeah. to it. So that adds so much more onto the connection with Cassidy. I can't wait to see him at the end of April. Uh, perform live with ha, Holy and Absence, Thornhill, and Dayseeker. So that would be number five. Now, this is such a tough one because there are so many more I could pick. Well, too bad. You can only pick one. Yeah. And also, we got to thank you for helping us get caskets on the podcast. So, oh, yeah. you're welcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Big All part right. of it. I got it. I'm going to go with number five Monday. Joey Berea from Varsity. Oh, okay. reason being is because the first time I talked to him was when I made a video of me trying to figure out varsity and there were things I liked about it. And there were things I didn't like about the sound, but Joey reached out to me and said, you know, I've never had anyone like do like this much in depth stuff. And even like the stuff that you said that you didn't really care for, you actually explained why. And it was just an opinion based thing. So I really did enjoy that. We had a conversation about the whole entire thing about this music. And then all of a sudden, when Welcome Home was supposed to come out in November, we did a whole interview off of that. And we just had a great time talking about everything around the album. And just it, it, it was something where, you know, it was we become friends off of that stuff. And even when the album like I, I dropped like they were like I was right about to drop the podcast. And then I found out that the album was being pushed back to January and the PR firm told me you can still release it, but if you want to wait to hold off to like January, I'm like, no, I'm putting this out now because of how good the interview was. And there are a lot of people that are in the on the Varsity Cult uh, Facebook page that really enjoyed it and really enjoyed the fact that you know you got more, you, at least you got a piece of the album, you got something from the album on the day it was supposed to come out. Yeah. So yep, those are my five. Beautiful. All right, Wyatt. So is this a question? Yeah. Yes. One last question. Um, what are some of your all-time favorite movies to watch? Ooh, movie yeah, film. All-time favorite movies to watch. How many do you want me to pick? Five. 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 Okay, five. Um, one, well, I'm gonna go with Deadpool. I Deadpool. don't really care for superhero movies, but Deadpool always makes me laugh no matter what. Yes. <laughs> um, again, I'll do. It, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be another superhero movie. But I'm gonna go with the Dark Knight. There's another one. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Dark Knight. You mean? You mean? Um, hold on. Hold on. I'm nowhere in hockey pants. You mean yes. this? Hey. Yes. Hey. I own this shit on DVD, bitch. I'm not wearing hockey pants. <laughs> Where is she? I'm Batman. Scars. Number three was a movie that I was watching while I was eating dinner before we started doing this. Oh, Shrek. Shrek. The real question yeah. is which oh, I think, I of think all the movies? Doing. Which one? Which, which one of all it? the movies is your favorite? There the was original. One right fucking answer. The Wrong. original. Wrong. I love the original. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> the second one I is had. the best one. The second one does not have Lord Farquhar. <laughs> 
No, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Quiet. Um. Okay, I got two more. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Deadpool, Dark Knight, Shrek. I'm gonna go with another movie from the year 2001. That also because Shrek opened up with the song "All Star" by Smash Mouth. This no. movie actually ends with the song "All Star" by Smash Mouth. It's a movie called Rat Race. Rat yes! oh, <laughs> that. that movie <laughs> is so off the wall bonkers. Every time I watch it, like th- I watched it at first time I watched it, I was six years old. So a lot there was a lot of adult jokes in there. The funny part about it was was I was laughing at all those jokes for completely different reasons than why they were actually funny. And then I watched the movie again when I was 17, and I'm like, it was funny oh. all over again. <laughs> Rat jokes. Just it, it's it's kind it's like a, basically story. the premise of the movie is there's like a group of like six people that are in Vegas, and the casino owner uh, basically yeah. creates a whole entire thing for his friends where they're gonna give these six people a chance to go like 500 miles south, like basically race down there to win two million dollars, and they're all gonna bet on it. And it's got like Cuba Gooding Jr., John Lovitz, Seth Green, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Mr. Bean is in there. <gasps> Mr. Bean. Uh, Wayne Knight, aka Newman, is also in there, and he hooks up with Mr. Bean. So <laughs> it is. It, 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 I, it's, um, it's a poorly put together movie, but it's fucking hysterical. Can I just say I love that Julian is the only one who ever hears my fucking comments. Kevin, because it's sad to see that people think Sausage Party's a kid's movie. Because Kevin, <laughs> what? Kevin, was saying, <laughs> Kevin was saying Kevin what Kevin was saying that um yeah. that the movie that he just said had a lot of uh adult jokes. And I said, hmm, kinda like Toy Story. Yup. <laughs> oh yeah, when you said that on cinematic analysis, how in yeah. Hey, don't forget SpongeBob. <laughs> the balloons. <laughs> don't trap them. <laughs> Uh, All right, and number five, we're going to go with the 1999 cinematic masterpiece known as The Mummy. The Mummy. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, bitch. I remember 1999. I'm talking about them with Brendan Fraser, oh, no. Rachel Wise, uh, Arnold Velasco, and uh, everything good around it, man. It's just one, it's one of the best movies of all time. Julian, no. Action adventure done right. <laughs> So, yep, there are my five. Deadpool, Dark Knight, Shrek, Rat Race, the 1999 cinematic masterpiece known as The Mummy. I feel like The Mummy cool. should be number one, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I'm rank them. I, I literally put them in order of when they came out. Well, guess what? It's number From one. From newest to latest. Or newest to, or, or, newest to oldest, yeah. All right, so uh, it is um, 20 minutes until 10 o'clock, so uh, speed round. Jason. <laughs> um... Okay, what is your number number one favorite podcast highlight from Core Progression? Number one favorite podcast highlight from the Core Progression podcast? Oh, it's like, sh- it's like your your favorite moment or story or story. Um, God damn, that's a tough one because I'm trying to think of like if there was a moment that just like completely just blew me the fuck away. What maybe when that guy got made it look like he got eaten by a shark? <laughs> I mean, the funniest story was the one I, I heard from uh, Empty with uh, them in the box truck. <laughs> <laughs> and he pulled over in a fucking box truck because then when they crossed from Georgia to Florida, they uh, didn't stop at the way station. So the cop pulled them over and there were three people in the front of the cab. And then there were three guys in the box truck <laughs> naked <laughs> with an air mattress on the ground. <laughs> Oh lord! Yeah, that was. Uh, but I would. Honestly, Press, what? <laughs> okay, when it comes to what? a highlight though from the podcast, this is probably it. So, it was the first time I ever got to talk to Joey Arena from uh, Outlier. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> Julian! Oh no! 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 So, <laughs> so we were doing it for. We were doing the. We were doing it one night, and all of a sudden, like his internet just kept cutting in and out. So 15 minutes and we were like, let's pick this back up again tomorrow. We've got a more stable internet connection. We'll take it from there. Good to go. Next day rolls around at seven o'clock. I log on. He isn't showing up and I'm pissed. I'm right about to exit out of the call. And 
I also did know I was wearing an Ice Nine Kill shirt for both of these. Not the same shirt, but, you know, different shirts on consecutive days. And he picks up the call after about uh, 7.35, so 35 minutes. And I'm a little kind of irritated, but you know what? Let's just, you know, play it cool. Okay. He says, I got to finish something up for 10 minutes. Here, talk to my producer. And I'm like, why the fuck would I want to talk to your producer? AD. It's Justin DeBleek. And I'm just like. JD Ice Nine Kills. Hey. Formally. Hi. <laughs> Well, and because of and because of and honestly because of that when they came out with when they were doing the uh, Joey Synthwave project because Justin or JD produces all that stuff when they came out with the um, cover of uh, Dreams by Van Halen and they did the Synthwave stuff it they specifically requested both of them to be on the podcast to talk about it. I love that. So when it comes to that, like. Like my favorite moment, I, I'm gonna go with that because that was just so fucking cool. <laughs> okay. All right, Josh. Speed Last round. Part. Um. So, what are your top five favorite concerts you attended? <laughs> okay, so one is gonna be that Rise Again show I talked about in 2017. Um. The Ice, the Ice Nine Kills show I saw in 2019 when I first actually got to see Ice Nine Kills perform live because holy shit was that something else. Uh, I'm going to go with when I got to see... So this was a couple weeks before that Ice Nine Kills show. It was after the burial in Motionless and White. And that's okay. when I cut my eyebrow open and I couldn't sure. mosh during Motionless yeah. and White. But Motionless' set was absolutely insane. This is, in like, this is like October 19th or something, so... Okay. So, like, god damn was that fun. Uh, shoot. I'm trying to think of, like, two others I could put in there that would just, like, that were, like, put me over the edge. Uh, um, I'm going to go with in October when I got to see Asking Alexander Data Remember and I broke my finger and then I, I washed with a broken finger throughout the whole entire just Data Remember that. set. That one also <laughs> sticks out. And, um, shoot. Let's see, because I want to give diff- like I want to I want to pick different bands for each of these as well, because let's give a little more diversity to it. But another one I'll pick would be uh, the varsity. <laughs> honestly, I'm gonna go with <laughs> I'm gonna go with that set at Blue Ridge <laughs> that I saw for uh, Falling in Reverse. Because of how insane I went in the pit. Like, that was... And then the whole entire thing with <laughs> Daddy's Biker Gang. <laughs> as cringy as it was, that was just kind of funny to be a part of it. <laughs> actually see that. But just, I mean, when it came down to it, a lot of that ended up being because the pit that we had for that was a lot of fun. I was in the middle of that thing the whole entire time. The amount of people I had coming up to me that wanted to do, like, you know, the grab the hands and do, like, spin around in a circle. So the much. amount of people that wanted to do that was absolutely yeah. insane. It was ridiculous. And then... Because Julian, I, I know you weren't a, you weren't there at the end of the set when they played Popular Monster, <laughs> and we did the Wall of Death, and I was the only one on my side that went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember you told me that you got nearly destroyed. I got blown the fuck up. I was on the ground and I had my hands over my head like this, like I just didn't want people to fall into me. And all of a sudden, like oh I'm like I was like rules of the pit, like someone falls down, you pick them up, and no one was picking me up, and I was wondering what the hell was happening. Well, because yeah. I went. On my side, I was the only one. Like, 25 people came from the other side. <laughs> they had all fallen on top of me. So everyone was picking up them first before they had gotten to me. And I'm just like, okay, Help. that makes sense. Help. Help. I need Help. somebody. Help. But, There's yeah, I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with those because that's set specifically for Falling Universe. I was just, like, the culmination of all the craziness that happened at Blue Ridge, all the crazy fun times I had in those pits. And that was the one that just, like, I mean – Shit, people were, I mean, people were calling me Milwaukee in that pit, like, because they didn't know my name, but they knew I was from Milwaukee, so that's how they were, like, they kept calling me that, like, I had a... like, a prison thing? I don't know, I had a freaking nickname. (laughs) I had a freaking nickname, that's all that mattered to me. (laughs) All right, all right, so, uh, AJ, uh, ask uh, Wisconsin one last uh, question. (laughs) 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 Ask the Wisconsin. Talk, Wisconsin. (laughs) Ask the cheese man. The cheese man. Okay, um, first of all, this is not a music question, but what you said about like SmackDown vs. Raw earlier, who were your favorite wrestlers back in the day when you were watching wrestling? 
So back in the day, I mean, I was when I was watching it, that was during the Ruthless Aggression era. So this was, of course, you know, post uh, as we were. So this was after The Rock had gone. This is after Stone Cold retired. This is after all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, without a doubt during that time. So this would have been like, you know, two, I say 2005 through maybe early 2008. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Perfect. That's it. So right before the PG era basically started. Yeah, that that was like before this in 2008. Yeah. When- so my favorite wrestler during that time, you guys are probably gonna cringe without a doubt was John Cena. I feel oh, that of course. Hey. <laughs> Julian, I feel left out. I don't know what any of this uh, means. The other the other two that I would put in there is like wrestlers that I in- absolutely enjoyed watching during that time. I I know he's still wrestling right now, but one was Bobby Lashley. Yeah, Bob Lash. The Almighty. Bobby Lashley. And the other one was um the other one was Rey Mysterio. Yes. yes. Oh, God. You gotta I cover the new WWE game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so yeah, those would be the those are so John Cena was always without a doubt my on a, like like you could it was my favorite. You you there was no change in that and and I like I started like like when I like it was like you know getting him it might have actually been like 2004 when I started watching stuff so this was when he was still the doctor of thugonomics this was before he won the, this is before this is before he won the <laughs> WWE title from JBL at WrestleMania 21. Yeah, Matty, like, are you good? Like that's when he had like the black U.S. title belt with the U.S. spinner in the middle. Yeah, like, yeah. I, hated the <laughs> yeah. I hated the spinner so fucking much. Okay. <laughs> now yeah, I come to the answer to that one. Can we yeah, just the WWE Championship will always be the best spin of <laughs> Maddie, you go uh, ask your last question before we get into the turnover, and then I thought we were doing the turnover now. I thought the last yeah. round I, that yeah, we, let's, we just let's did. Let's go turnover now. This is, so, it's literally nine forty-eight. Well, Kevin. <laughs> How the turnover works is that, you know, usually whenever we do, in, whenever interviews happen, you know, usually it's the interviewer asking the questions. But we like to do things a little bit different. We like to turn things over. So, Kevin, we're going to have you take over. And if you want to ask us any questions about anything, feel free. So, basically, oh, yes. you're, ba- you're basically turning me into the host of this podcast, right? Yeah. For, like, welcome. a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Welcome yeah. to the World Progression we'll Podcast. Back, you know. We got demoted. Can we be on the Chord Progression podcast? Well, we are right now. Yeah, thank you guys are right now. So, whoa, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression podcast. Let's start out like that to start out, you know, going all, you know. So, let's see. I'm going to ask everyone one question, and that's it. Oh, okay. 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 And the question is going to go to all of you. It was okay. a question I had written down from the last last night's live stream that we never got to that I kind of omitted. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh god. I don't know what happened, so. So I want you guys to think Product. and tell me what you think is the greatest three album run of all time. Oh, dude, that's hard. You Ooh. asked the hard ones. How dare you, sir? <laughs> you... <laughs> what do you mean? Three album run. Three, so now, so band puts out the, an album, and they put out a, a, a one right after it. They put out another one right after it, and those three. So I'm not talking oh about like God. you're picking three albums from a Benny band at any time. No, what? it's got to be consistently put out. I got one. Does three? I got one. It's uh for me, it's Three Days Grace from One X to Transit to Venus. I did not like the self titled. Um, I mean, I. <sighs> hmm. That's hard. I want to say Beartooth, but as much as I love them, Aggressive is, like, my least favorite. And I didn't – I say that as I have a fucking tattoo from that album on my arm. Um, but I I enjoy it more now that it's been remastered and re-recorded and everything. So I don't know if that technically will count. Um, I'm going to say No. No. Well, no, because as far as like technically, it would be disease, then re- ag- uh, aggressive re-release, and then below. What about Ice Nine Kills? I I want to say okay. So if I had to do Ice Nine Kills, it would be safe as just a shadow to every trick in the book. One hundred percent. Hmm. All right, Josh, you got. 
album run? Um, let's see. So I want to say the albums that I want to say cool. Slipknot, but it's so hard because I would say Slipknot. I mean, I liked Slipknot probably up to I I liked the debut album probably up to We Are Not Your Kind. There wasn't so every album. So like <laughs> pretty much. Can I actually change my answer? But, yeah, what okay. you got, Maddie? I I want it. I want to change it to because Josh is not getting me thinking. I want to change it to Ooh. Slipknot, 1999. Okay. Self-titled, Iowa, and then Subliminal Versus. Okay. I'm changing mine, all three Baby Metal albums. <laughs> Final <laughs> answer, I've locked in. You can't change Locked in mine, three. all three Baby Metal albums. Jason, what you um, got for me? I got mine. I got mine. From the fire things until, until now. From the fire things and all I'm going to change mine as well. With Slipknot, it's going to be the self-titled, to volume three. Okay. That's my answer. Un until their new album, King's the New Age, for state champs. AJ, you're up. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to say this, and you might be very shocked about this one. I think Static X wins constant death trip to Machine Stone. I love that. <laughs> I, feel I was not like, expecting okay. that from you, man. For some reason, I'm awesome. get behind the uh, Cult of Static album. I, I know some of the songs there, like Terrified and Lunatic, C28, but, like, I cannot get behind it for some reason. But, but like, from, like, Wisconsin Death Trip, um, uh, Machine, and um, Shadow Stone, Zone, I can definitely get behind because there's a couple of songs I actually like from those three albums. What the hell? Okay, Julian. Freaking out. I'm freaking out, man. I'm All right. Freaking out, man. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to our final. Wait, you have I one more question? Do you want to do one more? Because I one came I in my head yeah. that I saw. It was one last post one. Why it hasn't gone yet? By the way. Oh, <laughs> For my best three album run. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um. Kendrick. What? Kendrick. Kendrick I mean, Lamar had it. It could be any genre. Um, also, um, I think <laughs> they've had a three album run. Um, I would say a band that I really like, uh, Nirvana. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll say oh, Nirvana. yeah. I've always 100%. been a big fan. 100%. Nirvana. What about Alice in Chains? They, yeah. That first album. There's so many bands. Like, there's so many bands. too many bands. System of a Down. Is another big one. So what, what what's your second one, Kevin? In your opinion, what is the best last song on any album? So it doesn't matter what the album is, the song just has to be the last one on the album. Do you want me to go first? Okay. Do you want me to go yes. first? Maddie, go first. Easy. Go first. Easy. Saucy. Easy. I got this one. Can I go first? Disease. Yep. Clever. Okay. Clever, 100%. Clever I, by Beartooth. You would think that I would say Last Riff, but fucking Clever closes disease out so fucking beautifully. Because it starts out with fucking Greatness or Death being, like, in your fucking face, and then the album slowly fucking just flips back and forth between heavy and soft, and it closes it in such a beautiful fucking way with a beautiful fucking message. Oh. All right. AJ. Oh, this one... This one might be a little bit emotional here because I feel like this album was one of my favorite out my my one of my first albums I really got into, and it's one of my favorites of all time. ACDC Highway to Hell. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Night Prowler, and I and that song means a lot to me because like it reminds me of the last song like in an album from Bond ever performed. Yeah. <laughs> It just makes me emotional to this day, man. It's it's it. Couldn't fucking pick, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love this album so much. I've been listening to it when I when I was a child, like when I was younger myself. And um, you're still a child. <laughs> you're the youngest one here, my friend. Yeah. No well, sort of. Well, kind of. I'm a teen now. Are you also the tallest? But like when I was young, young, like seven years old at least. Fuck you. 
Have you seen pictures of AJ? He's fucking taller than Jason and Josh. I feel like this is a call out for me. Because <laughs> I'm 5'5". Five, five. Oh, yeah. oh, so Maddie's the shortest one. Yeah, <laughs> oh, there's fuck the off. <laughs> I'm the t- I think I'm the tallest one in this group. I'm 5'11". I'm almost yeah, six feet tall. Yeah, yeah bro. All right, um, anyway. I got one. Yeah, go ahead, Devin, Jason. how tall are so you? This isn't, isn't one. This isn't an album, but it's an EP. And I Return to Nothingness by Lorna Shore, the title track. It blew me away by the creativity and how heavy it was. Hell yeah. Ooh, was not expecting that, but damn, I like this question. All right, we got a couple other... I- I yeah. do have one for this one as well for an answer, but I'm yeah. going to wait till the end because yeah. this one, well, technically this one wasn't a last track, but I'm going to pick one that is to go along with the question. I'm going to have to go with Solway Firth by Slipknot because I like how some of the songs on the We Are Not Your Kind record were all different. Some he- some of them were heavy, and then, you know, you had those preludes, and then you end the album off with, like, a song that starts off, you know, slowly, and then all you hear is this badass freaking riff, and I'm like, god damn. They just went all out with it, so. God damn. <laughs> god damn. God damn. <laughs> all right. Wyatt, do you have one? What is our favorite one? Like, favorite closing track on an album. Probably Life is a Highway by Rascal Flatts. Ka-chow! <laughs> 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 and he's supposed to ride it all night long. Yeah. I can't do that. Bye, TikTok. I love, Bye, I love that song, dude. Bye, TikTok. Bye. All right. Hello. Oh, that's... Mm. TikTok. Made on TikTok. <laughs> I, I have to be prepared for this. I want I want Julian to answer this one before I give you guys what the answer I believe is oh, the the. I, this is one hundred percent it. I I don't know why I was contemplating, but this is one hundred percent. Oh, here we go. It's John Cena. Oh, there he is. Aerials, System of a Down, Toxicity. Yes. One of the best album closers of all time, in my opinion. That song is so fucking beautiful. The way it just fa- the way the way it just closes out the album is just like you seriously you go from toxicity to psycho and then end it with aerials like that's those are the three best three ending songs on an album in my opinion yeah all right so all right, kevin what's yours numb by lincoln park yes Ooh, oh, okay. beautiful. Yes. i agree I with it it is the that. final track on meteora and mm-hmm. the it's it connected with so many people on such a emotional level the Honestly, there are two things you should do if you have a chance. One is anytime if you're at a concert, if I hope to God someone plays, you know, between like sets, especially if it's like a, a massive, like big rock or metal concert, someone have like in between that set, someone play numb. The whole entire crowd will sing and it is just absolutely Perfect. incredible. Number two, number two, go online and watch one, watch the video from Linkin Park's final show that they played in 2017, the one, the tribute to Chester, because every song that they sang up to that point, it was the last song they played, but every song they sang up to that point, there was someone else that came out and covered Chester's vocals. So you had, you had MGK do one. So I know Julian's going to cringe. You had Ali Sykes do crawling. You had Jerry McKinnon do one. I think you had, uh, Derek, you had Derek from some 41 do one, but they ended with numb and they just had a shining light on the microphone stand in the middle of the stage that had all the flowers wrapped around it. And all the, no one came out to sing or anything. The band just played. And, and like the first like three seconds of the, of the song where the verses would be, it's, it's kind of quiet, but then all of a sudden it's like the fans kind of picked up on that and realized that everyone that they had, like they brought out a bunch of other people from the music scene from to, to, you know, do Chester's vocals for that show. But when it came to numb, no one was coming out. It was the fans that were going to cover it. It was so fucking beautiful. That whole Dude, yeah. I genuinely can't watch that anymore because of how much I cry at it. Oh my god! Yes. I literally bawled my fucking eyes out when watching that concert for the first time. Mm-hmm. It I was. Mean, I was so fucked after he died. Like it, that was my that was entire wild. childhood. That was, was the saddest day in the music. Lincoln Park was like 
one of those first bands that introduced me to metal. Like it was it was Corn and Linkin Park and Slipknot. And when I found out he died, I was so fucking yeah. devastated. Like I told yeah. my mom and she didn't even fucking believe it. And I was like so fucking devastated. Like I was in my room, I was crying, I was a fucking mess. Like every radio station was also talking about it too. Like a pop station was talking about it. His impact within the music is- scene is just he this yeah. man was a fucking legend dude like he i, I, I yeah. found out about chester's death from my little brother jesus well and the thing I, too is, is it's still a like his presence oh, is still big in the music scene today oh yeah 100 percent. It, it's that thing like i i love one more one more light so much by oh, Lincoln Park. It's so different i like, love that song like the first time i ever heard them i just you know there's so I was like, wow, these songs like they mean so much, like the way he sounds and he talks, but but you don't know like what they battle like outside. But Chester explained in his music what he went through, and then just when he died, it's like I you shouldn't you shouldn't let suicide control you like that because it's it's a big topic, you know. Mental health is very serious, but yeah, his yeah. memory lives on forever and his music will always be mm-hmm. for new for the new generation to listen to 100 percent. and this is what pissed me off even mo- the most about the whole thing is the amount of people that called him a coward for taking his own life oh my god that genuinely pissed me no. off it's just like who the fuck do you think you are you don't know what's disgusting man through. Mm-hmm. exactly you know what the fucking man went through exactly like, like and honestly that was like right that when that happened that's when i left twitter completely i left Twitter completely because of how many horrible people were saying these things about him in the comments and on tw- and yeah. tweet like, like I, I haven't been on twitter that. since i've been yeah. off twitter since 2021 been 2017 so you're almost been out for five years five years best like, decision i've ever made yeah like to add on what you say i don't like when a celebrity you know they announce on social media that they pass away or something i don't go on twitter because a lot of people on Twitter are very toxic. It's more like you pay mm-hmm. tribute to them the way they should be remembered, like performing their songs or saying how much they meant to you for you to go into the business just because you want to do music and they're one of your inspirations. Don't go on Twitter and saying, oh, he he's he's a coward for doing this or he's a dummy for like doing s- stuff stupidly. It It's the point of what they go through in life to tell you what they're gonna make do next it's yeah it's unexpected open about it he was this, open about it he was. this is what i want to say um i remember before he died there was a clip that had been resurfacing when he died um where chester was talking about his depression his anxiety whatever and how he was struggling with it and the interviewer literally laughed Oh and let's not forget, he also, at that time, had just lost his friend to the same thing. Chris Cornell. Yeah. And it, it genuinely pisses me off. Not just because I've been through it. I know Julian's also been through it, but... A year ago. Because so the people that call those that go through these thoughts and actions a coward don't know what it's like. They've never been through something like this. And it's fucking disgusting. Right. This is why, like, I lost my faith in humanity. Like, I had to, I, it took me a long time to really trust people again after, I, cause I remember that interview. Like, that, people that, were fucking pissed at that interviewer. He, that was literally like, what, a week after Chris Cornell passed away? Um, it was, uh, I don't know about that. I know, I believe it was a week before Chester died. That's I think right. that's that's but what it was. It just pisses me off, and people are still making fun of mental health issues to this day. And so, yeah, and because people aren't educated. And you know what? With I, I am. Mm. We're gonna go on a tangent, and it's yeah. getting late, anyways. Let let's let's not go on this anymore because we will be here for hours, and I will not, and no one will be able to stop me from ranting. So yeah, same. Let's Thank let's you. go ahead and do a quick game of Would You Rather, and then we will end it for there because I know I people are doing guess the artist too. 
You know, let's just do guess the artist because okay, we've done it so many times. That's, that's all I've got. Okay, but um, but yeah. So Kevin, my man, basically what me and Ma what me and the Maddie uh decided to do, uh, we decided to go on Spotify or whatever streaming service we have, pick up lyrics from bands randomly, and uh, you just had to guess the artist based on the lyrics we read to you. All right, get ready to watch the cringiest uh, guessing game of all time because I'm never good at this shit. <laughs> and it's Who's just going gonna, first. It's just going to go back and forth between me and Maddie. I know everyone else might want to do it, but we want to get through this as quickly as possible. So, Maddie, you go ahead and go first. Okay. Kevin, this is really going to test how you know these people. I don't think to question the blissful truth. Ah. Uh. I'm trying to, like, I've got the tune in my head, but I can't, like. If you want a hint, I will only give you one. For for each one or for the whole, like, game? For each one, you'll get one hint, if or, you ask. All right, give me a hint for this one. They have been on the podcast for both of us. Oh, Caskets. What song? <laughs> Uh, hold me now. Um, no. Darn it. Glass hearts. First lyric. Ah, there we go. Yep. All right, Julian, you're next. All right. Here we go. Turn the lights out. Let me think clearly. Oh my god. Dude, I told you this was not gonna go well. I'm not gonna this shit. You wanna you wanna hint? Yes. We can't go. <laughs> Maddie, hush. I'm at the chorus now. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were on your top five favorite albums of twenty twenty one. What was the, what were the lyrics again? Turn the lights out. Let me think clearly. I'm on the second verse now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's got to be bare to that if Maddie's on the second verse. Well, we can't go, go back. back. We go back. This is an easy one for me. Two. What song is it, Kevin? Let's, well, I mean, after Julie started singing, it's the past is dead. Okay. Yes. All right. I have one, I have one. We're just doing me and Maddie because we well, want Well, it. Jason's got one. I want to hear what Jason's got. Mine got stolen last time. I don't need another one stolen. All right, so me and Maddie will do four more, and then we will call it a day. But Jason, go ahead. All right, this is probably going to be an easy one. I'm ready to bury all of my bones. I'm ready to lie but say I won't. So tell me your secrets and join me in pieces. Oh, that's eternally yours by Motionless and White. I was about to I got one. say. Right. What you got, Josh? So... We were just talking about this band. Um, I scream at myself when there's nobody else to fight. I don't lose. I don't win. If I'm wrong, then I'm halfway right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Is that, is that from Lincoln Park? Yes. It's a yep. Lincoln Park song. I, I have one more. Was that from Heavy? Um, no. Ow. The hint, uh, the hint, um, it's from the album One More Light. Okay, I'm not gonna get because the only ones I remember from One More Light are heavy in the in the titular song. Oh, okay. What was it? Um, it's halfway right. Half oh, oh, I remember. Okay, I'm ready. All right, what you got, Maddie? You got Okay. Because this got stolen from me last time. <laughs> bitch. Not you, Julian. I'm a, uh, hey, I'm a bitch. <laughs> Take World me business. down, see how low I go. I feel the rage, something is starting to grow. Take me down. Is that below by Beartooth? Yes! <laughs> I have one it more. It got stolen from me last time. Hey, at least I got that one. Woo! <laughs> Jason, you go ahead and say your last one. All right, all right this, this is going to be my last one. It kills me not to know this, but 
<laughs> yeah, I'm saying it kills me not to know this. I already know where you're going with this one. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> that was not like to know this, but I've all <laughs> just forgotten what the color of her eyes were, her scars, or how she got them. Dude, that's Saved by Rise Against. My favorite song of all fucking time, man. There how many go. more are we doing, Julian? Uh, well, I was about to do my my second one out of five. So after oh, my... we're doing five. Okay, so I have I have two. I got one more. Or two. three more. Yeah. Okay. You just did two. So, Josh, you say your last one. All right. Um, hand grenade pins in every line. Throw them up and let something shine. Going out of my fucking mind. I know this. Wait, can you say it again? Because I... Um, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Bleed it out by Lincoln Park. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I, I, right. I'll go because uh, I. Right, Julia, Julia, you go. All right. <clears throat> so uh, it's about drive. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. You bitch. <laughs> it's it's whatever song Tech Nine made that features The Rock. <laughs> it's Face Off. Face Off. <clears throat> okay. It's about, God, it's about it's power. It's about drive. It's about power. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> You're sick of feeling numb. You're not the only one. Oh, shit. Come on. Come on. I believe we're redoing this album. Come on. I like redoing this album. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Is this another bear tooth song? It sounds like it's a no. bear tooth song. You're about to take with my lights. Sorry. My mom's messing with my lights. Uh, God damn it! Can't see you. <laughs> I, I'm I'm struggling on this one right now. What were, what were the lyrics again? Um, you're sick of feeling numb. You're not the only one. Can I get a hint? This came out in the early 2000s. You said this band earlier too. Is it Linkin Park again? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Julian, I'm disappointed that you don't know it. I know it. I'm I'm stumped. Like, I'm not making the connection. You're at all. about to feel real dumb, Kevin. Probably. It's pain by Three Days Grace. Yeah, I kind of feel a little dumb. <laughs> okay, well, my my third one. <clears throat> I know I got you, and you know you got me. Uh, everything we need by a day to remember. We got everything we need. <laughs> I don't right. care if he says I love that song. <laughs> Are you ready, Kevin? Yeah. I can't keep my grip. I'm slipping away from me. God damn it. We all raved about this album in 2020. That's the only hint I'll give you. Uh, <laughs> it's funnier because you and Kevin are literally right next to each other. <laughs> you want to see my impression of a hot dog? <laughs> oh man, that just looks wrong. Hi TikTok. Oh no. Hi TikTok. <laughs> Hi, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> Was that from Polaris? Absolutely not. Uh, it's John Cena. What were the lyrics again? Because I'm trying to like pick it, put it in my head. I can't keep my grip. I'm slipping away from me. I did it in the tune of the song. That should help you. I'm running into you. Teardrops from Bring Me the Horizon. Yes. Bring Me the Horizon. <laughs> the Horizon. All right. <laughs> Two more, my friend. This is uh oh, this is a good one. <clears throat> Love, it will get you nowhere. You're on your own, lost in the wild. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. It's not Avril Levine. No, I, I, I said, what the hell, not hell yeah. She has a song called, what the hell, you uncultured swine. 
Uncultured swine. God damn uncultured it, Kevin. Swine. If I'm uncultured, then well, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, Julian, can you give me a hint? Yeah, you're zombified. Anyway, um, so <laughs> it will. Uh, Maddie, you, you can kill me later. Um, so the this band, th this is all this album. <laughs> Let me just pull up my uh, my music. Actually, I, I'm not going on my laptop. I'm going on my phone because that's a lot more fucking faster bullshit. <laughs> I'm getting stressed. I'm getting stressed. <laughs> it's 1017 and there's still no link. Fucking punk. Okay, here we go. It, it was off 2015. Don't look on your phone. <laughs> you cheater. Oh, that me. <laughs> Oh, man, it, was the the, it was the meme I posted today. So it was from 2015. What was the what was the lyrics? Love, it will get you nowhere. You're on your own, lost in the wild. Love, it will get you nowhere. You're on your own, lost in the wild. You're killing me. <laughs> I am killing, killing you. Calls. Dude, I'm like, killing me. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you. <laughs> Psycho. Muse. Psycho. I haven't listened to that song in years, man. Okay, do I have one more or two more, Julian? You have, you have one more, Manny. Okay, well, uh, mine more. is a this or that because I didn't have enough. Oh, this or that. Yeah. All right, fine. Rise against or falling in a verse? Rise against. Thank Next you. Question. <laughs> that was easy. All right, I my last lyric is gonna be: Now I'm lost on my own in search of something real. <laughs> oh my God, are you? No, fucking... why can't I? <laughs> <laughs> One sec. <laughs> I heard One sec. The world in my hand by Ice Nine Kills. Thank you, oh, Jesus well. Christ. There we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps everything up. That was our conversation with Kevin and the conversation. Yeah, that was conversation. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's end things off like we usually do with our outros. Let everyone know where they can find us. We'll get to Kevin last and let him take the floor. Maddie, you go first. Let them know where they can find you. Let them know what you got going on. Okay. Hi, I'm Maddie. What the fuck is up, Kyle? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, no. I'm nervous. Um, you can find me at Bill Bear Tooth on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch. I've been posting on TikTok very much so. Um, I will also be posting my top ten Bear Tooth songs hopefully soon. I have to. I have. I have the audios for that and Spirit Box. I just have to sit down and actually film it. Um, Spirit Box. <laughs> Box. Box. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for for hanging out and watching, and obviously go go follow Kevin, Kevin at the Chord Progression Podcast. And wait, a big wait, thank wait. you. What, Matt, Kevin? What just happened? I'll get to it when, when we get to me. Okay, jo <laughs> I, Josh, you go. Josh, I wasn't you. done. Oh, Maddie, I wasn't done. Uh, a big thank you to Kevin to coming on and hanging out with us. I mean, this is probably like. As much as I love our other interviews, this is probably like the most laid back and fun interview that we've had. Um, just getting to talk about random shit um, was was great. So, and you are also, I'm gonna put this out there now. More than welcome when you have the chance. You are more than welcome to come on for cinematic analysis. Oh yeah! Go follow us there. By the way, that's it. If you, if you if you do the 1999 cinematic masterpiece that is the mummy, I'm there. I'm pretty sure we will be doing it as well. <laughs> okay. Well, Maddie, you, do you want to be here when Kevin does his? Bit, bit, I'm gonna. You... I'm not leaving. I'm staying. Okay. Well, that, and anyways, Josh, you go. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Thanks for checking out our interview with Kevin. Um, be sure to follow us here uh, at the Moshcast. Def definitely check mm -hmm. out our TikTok, Instagram. Twitter, everything will be down below in the description for you to check out. And be sure to check out our movie podcast, Cinematic Analysis. Movie film. Movies. Yes. Yes, we movie. love movies. And we love films. Um, and, yeah, definitely check okay. us out on Crash and Burn. Everything will be down below for you. Be sure to check our stuff out. 
and check out Julian on IGTV as well as uh, oh. Maddie on Twitch. And yeah, check us all out. It's all down there. All right. Yeah, yeah it's down here. We'll see you next time. Down there for all you guys. That's Kevin. <laughs> it's down there for everybody. Where was this? I don't get it. Kevin. What? Point is me. Yeah. I, I think we'll be down there, including Kevin. That's Julian. Episode. You're pointing at fucking Julian, Josh. Okay, I, I, I don't know. What the pointing at what? <laughs> Whoa, 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 pointing at you. What did you think I said? Uh-huh. Are you having a me moment? You, you said pointing at <laughs> fucking Julian. What the fuck? <laughs> what Damn, about? that's mad sus. I'm uncomfortable. In the skin oh. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I got <laughs> that. I'm uncomfortable right. in the skin I'm in. <laughs> AJ, go on it. All right. Thank you guys for watching another episode of the loudest podcast of all fucking music, the Mosh fucking cast, where we interviewed Kevin, where I had a fun time, of course, talking to him as always. And um, I'm looking forward to do more interviews with you in the future. Um, hopefully get on, get you on on some of the podcast episodes that are your favorites. And um, yeah, looking forward to talking to you soon, man. And also, um, check out his podcast. Court Progression Podcast. Check out Julian's IGTV, Josh's YouTube channel, Maddie's Twitch, Jason's Minecraft server, or whatever. And then yeah. why again fun at Sesame Street for Twitch. fun. What the fuck? Anyways, um, anything, but okay. And also, um, guys, go follow our TikTok page, Crash <laughs> underscore Mosh underscore analysis. And also go follow another cut of our TikToks, Crash of Burn Pod. Where we're gonna do wrestling content very soon. Stay tuned for that. And yeah, guys, this has and also still go subscribe to the Crash and Burn Wrestling Podcast, um, Moshcast, and Cinematic Analysis on YouTube. Go follow every podcast on Insta and Twitter and etc. Whatever you're gonna do, right. thank you guys for watching, um, and I'm fucking out. Rock on, motherfucker. You're fucking out of here? No, no. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable oh, with this skin right. I'm in. I'm going to make my choice. That's good. <laughs> Sorry, hard. Julian. I'm not. Jason, go, Jason, go on I'm ahead. And listen to Katie. Thank- okay. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode of the Moshcast, where we interviewed Mr. Kevin from Core Progression Podcast. <laughs> um, we hope you all enjoyed this. <laughs> did this episode and i don't know what's going on now but thanks for watching we'll see you for baby metal yes baby metal and the return oh shit (laughs) kelly quinn made a return to the podcast (laughs) are you is anyone else left to uh plug or am i good to go yeah i had okay yeah, thank you for an episode here on the interview series in the Mosh Castle. It was a really fun episode here tonight. Uh, glad to be, that we have Kevin on here. Uh, great interview. Good, nice to meet Kevin here. And uh, well, I'm glad that we've all had a good time here. Please like, comment, subscribe to the podcast, and stay tuned for future episodes. Check out past future episodes. Check out the TikTok page. And also, before I go here, AJ, you forgot your pull-ups. <laughs> Shitting in Pampers? Oh my god! Oh. A good promotion. Check out the recent TikTok. AJ became a Bro, I just promoted yeah, that. AJ being a complete uh, American. You forgot your pull-ups. <clears throat> I'm so glad Kelly Quinn came back. AJ is though. a mentor to protect Auntie now. What are we gonna get next? Why did you did you finish yours? <laughs> yes, I did finish mine. Um, all right, Kevin, you go. All right, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and end things off before we get to Kevin. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching our conversation with Kevin of, of the Core Progression Podcast. Kevin Halstead from the Core Progression Podcast. I, I, I've never said his last name ever, which is weird. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the Moshcast. It was always a pleasure having you. Feel free to come on anytime, if, anytime you want. Feel free to come on Cinematic Analysis anytime you want. You are always welcome. Your family here. So yes, you are. Yep. Coming up soon for the Mosh Cast, we will be talking with Erica Leanne from Mosh Talk. It's going to be awesome. Hi, Erica. Yeah. Very excited to have her on. Erica Leanne. And uh, 
other than that, you can find me on Instagram, Heavy Metal Joker underscore music. Got my redo for favorite albums of 2021 coming Saturday. And I follow me on TikTok at Heavy Metal Joker. Top 10 Beartooth songs coming tomorrow. And I know that I'm very excited about that and very curious about that. And other than that, find me on Cinemac Analysis. Follow all of us on our social meds. And uh, Kevin, the floor is yours. Hey, man, that's usually my line. But all right, let's go do this shit. So thank you to the Moshcast. Thank you to Julian, AJ, Wyatt, Josh, Maddie, and Jason for having me on the Moshcast to talk all about whatever the hell they asked me because there was a lot of great questions here. And, you know, you got to know a little bit more about myself. So woohoo! When it comes to finding the Chord Progression Podcast, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at Chord Progression Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at CP Pod Official. Yeah, I had to, you know, do that one differently because, well, Twitter's got weird things with the ad. Also, remember to subscribe to the Chord Progression Podcast. We are on YouTube where you can actually watch all the interviews live with every single artist we have on, along with listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio, and Amazon. And the reason I was freaking out so much when you guys started this was because I just got an email back to schedule an episode to be recorded on the 22nd, which will likely come out the first episode in April, with the people of when we were hungry fest. Bring me the fucking pancakes in the pit. What the fuck is up, Denny's? We're What's doing this up, shit. Denny's? This is going to be awesome. I am pumped. You, sh- you think I'm excited? You should feel my nipples. My God, this is like... <laughs> This is fucking awesome! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What the world? Hey, Kevin. Okay, remind me, not, remind me not to do that when we meet up in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what? Feel <laughs> these nipples? Take the fuck away. Yeah, ice nine kills are on. Feel these nipples. They're as sharp as blades. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say that to you, too, at some point. <laughs> yeah. Can I imagine if Erica overhears you saying that. She's like, "What no, the fuck?" It's gonna Erica. make a straight sign that just says, Hello, "Spencer, my nipples are hard. Come feel them." <laughs> no, you gotta put that on a T-shirt. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, so fuck Ronnie Ranky. Feel these nipples. <laughs> no, thank you. That sounds like a terrible time. <laughs> like a terrible Friday night. Yeah, so it's a close this out once again. I mean, we just listed where all you can find everything with the Core Progression Podcast. Again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and then you can subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and on Amazon once again because we've got a couple episodes coming up with bands like Generation Underground. We have, uh, I'm trying to think who else is coming up soon. Uh, Cheer Up Dusty, that one was fun as hell as well. And Gary, because when we were Hungry Fest is on the schedule it's gonna happen along with some other ones we have planned in april going forward with super american belmont um I'm trying to think of the the plush. protest plush i'm working on that one right now as we speak so um wind waker so some of these are already you know in the queue right now we're just waiting to get the confirmation on dates and schedules so i'm excited you can be excited please be excited please subscribe like all the Corporate Rush Podcast stuff, all the Moshcast stuff, all the other stuff, Cinemac Analysis, and every single thing, Crash Over Podcast, every single thing, uh, every single thing that everyone had said. So on that note, that's going to be for you guys. Thank you for watching listening to the Moshcast interviews, Kevin, the Core Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single episode with a big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yeah. Bye.